Hi, this is Benendorf, and welcome back to a probably somewhat less exciting episode of Victoria 2, Heart of Darkness. Last left off, of course, our once rival France had dragged us to defeat in the Great War, although we do still stand head and shoulders above the next two great powers, so it happens, you know, we're not going to finish this up quite as strong as we'd like, but again, it happens. What are you going to do? Uh, so for this episode, I'm going to try and finish up some more technology, and maybe go ahead and see if perhaps we can't declare war on somebody. After all, just because we're weak doesn't mean we're out of this. So, first off, let's move the Homeland Protection Front, misnomer that it may be, over here towards Cambo Cambodia, which we'll also start justifying a war with. Uh, establishing Protectorate. Everybody who can declare war on us at this point has, so... Come on, let's rage. Uh, it looks like we have Dynam. Oh, right. We want to declare war on them at some point, too. Eh, they'll be next. Wait, all the other armies. This one's waiting. Third transport fleet. Um, why aren't you over here picking up these troops? That was quite silly of me. Fifth fleet, though, is moving on home. And 28th army... See, 25th Army. And that's an adequately sized army, although it needs some more infantry. Basically, our entire army is just a... Our entire military is a, just a complete mess right now. But we'll get it all working again. Hopefully, anyways. So, yeah, let's get started. And money has to shake out, but it seems like we're doing pretty well, so I'm going to drop taxes a little bit on everybody. Oh, uh, we're paying 15 grand a day to, in war indemnities for a war that we started trying to save, I don't know, Romania maybe? It's been a while since we started that war, I don't really recall. One problem is that our prestige is a lot lower. Let's see, we have... All sorts of problems here, so I'm going to go ahead and expand all these factories. Because we really need the space. And, you know, at least our industry is just ridiculously dominant. We have more industry than the next highest, well, almost more than the USA has points total. So yeah, we're still going to be alright. Political lobbying, getting a little bit of organization. Oh no, eight infamy, whatever will I do? Except, you know, not care at all. And naval integration is going to be done soon, though that doesn't really matter. On the other hand, pretty much everything of value has been researched at this point. Other than a few of these commerce, which neoclassical wouldn't be terrible. And tax efficiency is completely unnecessary for us. Okay, pretty much all of our useful tax are done. But mechanized mining in another province, always a good thing. And there goes naval integration. So, I can't imagine we're going to be fighting any more wars. Well, not that we'll need the navy anyways. So let's go with uh, neoclassical theory. That'll take, what, six months, a little less than? Not too bad. And money's still coming in, so I'm going to lower taxes again. Ooh, middle class are not paying their fair share. Can't have that. Alright, come on. Let's get this war justification on the road. I want to stomp some faces in. Take out my anger on these poor Southeast Asian countries. Hmm. Blood and iron mine. It's the best kind of mine. Though I don't think you can actually mine blood. And we'll give this to the merchants because goodness knows we don't have enough money for our capitalists. He said sarcastically. And upgrading some more of these factories. We've almost caught up in Henan. Kenza, not quite, not quite there, but getting there. And Southern Zahili will soon be to the point where everyone's not constantly under, uh, underemployed or unemployed rather. Underemployment's a different thing. Oh, look at this. We can now make our own oil, we get a little bit of prestige, and dreadnoughts and cruisers are better. Yeah, well, our navy was the pride of the world before we were forced to sink it. But I'm not super bitter, no. Gonna get rid of some of these merging things. 
Uh, oh, well, I can't merge or I can't turn that off of a rally point. That seems to be a bit of a bug. But anyways, turning off all of these rally points, I don't really need them anymore. Because I'm not going to be building anything for the rest of this game. Fortunately, that's just the way the cookie crumbled. And yes, I used an awful cliche. It happens. So, new store, some additional farming efficiency, which boosts our income pretty significantly. And CB generation speeds drop. One benefit of this is by losing the war, it's possible that the fascists will gain a lot more support in the upper house. Maybe could even get us a fascist government. Better late than never, right? That has been my goal for a while. And I'm really not doing much of use with my diplomatic influence, but I don't know that there's a whole lot worth doing at this point. Someone who goes bankrupt. Not that important. Fascist soup kitchens. Yes, we want all of the, them to become more fascist. Those fascists seem all right. And we have a CB, so no time like the present. Well, let's start off justifying a war. Oof, only acquire state. Annoying. What about this one? Oh, they're allied. All right, well, whatever. Acquiring that state. And let's take Cambodia. It's a holiday there, as someone once sang. This is going to be an extremely short war. Six days for that province. Probably five or six for this one. One more, and Japan has shown that we're still crazy strong even when we've been just completely gutted. Ooh, extra organization. Hooray. Dear Cambodia, give me your stuff. Sincerely, Japan. Cheers, bruh. Cambodia is ours. We can't actually turn it into a not-colonial province, but whatever. It'll happen. And this Burma, huh? They're in a sphere. Might be worth even going to war with China again for... just to get uh, Luang Prabang, but on the other hand, the number of troops I have right now, that's probably not wise. Alright, moving the third army onto the fourth transport fleet. Gonna bring it back over into the mainland East Asia. Because it's actually a fully equipped and ready to fight unit. Correct size and everything. Fifth fleet is back at home. Which is nice, I suppose. And upper house rearranged. Fascists only gain about 3.5%, which isn't super great, but it's okay. A little bit of permanent prestige and neoclassical theory has finished. So what to do next? Keynesian economics. Not a big fan, but, you know, he was a smart guy, and I think that extra factory input efficiency tech will help our industrial power increase even further. Now, I'm guessing extended subsidies are the way to go here. And everything's all paid up. And, of course, we still have lots of unemployment, so let's expand some more of these factories. I'm not sure that we will ever be able to successfully catch up here. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and build airplanes, some of these higher level factories that no one else is going to build. And yeah, I could particularly pick them out so that they would fit nicely with what I'm building, but eh, it's not that important at this point. Mm, let's put some radios there. Uh, let's put a fancy clothes. Or luxury, excuse me, not fancy. In Fujian, or however you pronounce it. And then in Hinan. Uh, let's put some clothing because we already have some cloth. And then... Hmm. What else to build? We have everything from glass. Fancy furniture, that's what I'll do. Or again, luxury furniture. I'll see if that doesn't help with the unemployment a little bit, anyways. And now we wait. Oof, getting some bad lag right now. I'm not really sure why. 
let's see. Just going to keep this clock rolling. We have approximately two years left now. And the fourth transport fleet is getting close to bringing us home. Extra prestige from a couple of people that are named. This justification is going to take a while. Yuck. Our war exhaustion is pretty bad right now. Now where do we find that? Right here. Well, only 9%, but even still. It's not ideal, to say the least. And so, oh, more prestige. Slight though it may be. And so here we wait. Um, fascist newspaper. Let's get the poor to be fascist. I feel like that's the way to go. We're making plenty of money, so I'm going to lower some taxes again. Eh, might as well lower it on everybody. I can run, afford to run a short deficit, and it seems to make up for itself by the extra that they make and thus buy. More prestige, more prestige. And the diplomatic balance is slowly going down at least, it looks like. Our war justification was found against Dynam. But it's not really a big deal. Again, we have 100 plus infamy at this point. Nothing's really going to make much of a difference. Everybody who wanted to fight me already has, like I've already said. And I don't much care about their religion, but please stop messing with the holy sites. It gets annoying. You crazy people who mess with or with holy sites. This 28th army is just, well, it's not entirely useless, because I guess the armor is pretty useful. But here's some tractors. Tractors are good. Extra income. Vietnamese menace. Yeah, they're really scary. Let's, let's invade them. That's what I'm saying. Another two months, and we'll be able to. I would imagine the war will not take a full two months. But I should be able to add another war goal, maybe get two states out of it, unless they only have two states. Which looks like it might be the case. But if that is the case, then, you know, it happens. Commercial retailers, so extra farming efficiency. Still don't want to take the National Banking Act. Yes, we will definitely take host the 12th Olympic Games. 10th, not 12th. 10th Olympic Games. That is something I'm interested in. And we are now at war with Dynam. Give me yo state, bruh. As they probably say somewhere. Although I hope not. It would make me weep for our nation's youth. Japan's nation's youth, of course, all expended themselves fighting against the British and Russians for bits of Siberia and India that we ended up giving up. But enough of that sadness. Keynesian economics is finished. Well, let's go ahead and finish up the Navy. Why not? We may be able to get it all done in the next two years anyways. It's going to be close. Kind of a photo finish, so to speak. Another one? What else? Make puppet. Eh, it's not really worthwhile. Cutting down to size. Humiliate. I don't really care what their prestige changes, though. So none of those are really worthwhile. And our athletes are victorious. Glory to Japan. Ooh. HPF. Get moving. Oh, and there's a crisis. I am very uninterested in this crisis. Hey, and nobody else was interested. How about that? HPF's taken some more. Let's take their capital, and then Vietnam or Dynam will probably be willing to give up. Survey says they will accept this offer. Welcome to the fold, state. Let's build up some forts. And this army can just move on back to central Southeast Asia. Gonna open up these factories and expand them because I'm gonna go ahead and say that they're probably going to get some more craftsmen in there soon, if only from immigration. And gonna make the farmers a little happier. Spending all of these factories because I need the space. 
Let's see. Let's support the... Well, yeah, let's support it. Gives us till 37, which is long enough. Something else is exploding. Hooray for nitroglycerin. And so the shutter sh shuts on. Can you say that? Shutter shuts? Regardless. The end of our penultimate gear. It's been quite the ride, guys. Somewhere is electrified. And upper house. Does not look like we're going to be getting many fascists. But there you have it. January 1st, 35. One more year to go. I don't think we're going to be able to expand much more other than just keeping the factories rolling. And it looks like we're pretty safe in number one. So, one last social reform. Let's give them some good minimum wage. Why not? The, free, the Fry Corpse. It looks like that would be fascist, I'd think. And fascists be dancing around. Let's let them do that. They can prance if they want to. They can leave their friends behind. Sorry, I don't know why my Let's Play is so reference laden today, but it is, so, you know, enjoy or don't. Let's see. All sorts of these forts have expanded, but there's no way to actually get any more built. At this point, we have nine more months. More, a little bit more prestige, both permanent and otherwise. And so, here we wait, ticking out the clock until the modern era truly has begun. Unfortunately, I don't... As far as I am aware, there is no working Victoria 2 to Hearts of Iron 3 converter. However, I will be keeping the save in the case that it, one comes out, or Hearts of Iron 4 has such a thing, so that perhaps this Japan will be able to get revenge. Because I'm really unhappy that France made us lose that war. It's... Quite annoying, as one could say. Now let's take a look at these rebels. Wow. Campaign for safe working conditions? Nope. No safe working conditions. No liberation. And let's demand some super strict discipline. The strictest. If you're not Japanese, you better be well disciplined. And... Hey, we're getting some more cores. Because that's meaningful at this point. Just kidding, it's not. And it looks like... Yeah, there's no way. Wow, that is just ridiculous amounts of unemployed craftsmen. It's crazy. Six months to go, though. Let's take a look at the great powers while this clicks down. In fact, let's look at the whole... Like, top 16. We have ourselves, number one. USA, still... Democracy, uh, with the Republican Party in charge, is number two. We have a very powerful military, although much weaker than ours was at our peak. Pretty good industry and very low prestige, or else they'd be a little bit of a threat. A little bit more prestige, of course, permanent prestige. Next up is the UK, HM's government. They haven't changed. Low prestige, but pretty good industry and military, number two in both of those. Russia has the highest prestige since we dropped all of ours. Though thankfully we're still at two. And their industry and military aren't great. The military probably because we just decimated them. But they are still a monarchy, albeit one with a slight constitution. Prussia is a fascist dictatorship. Never became Russia, but whatever works for them. And France apparently lost to the fascists, or the... Yeah, we'll take a look at the end of the game, but it would appear the fascists took over for them. Eh, extra cores. Their military is zilch, again, because of that war. Netherlands sneaks in at number seven, although there's a huge jump from France to the Netherlands, and so it doesn't really matter, but they're socialist. China is number eight, is fascist, probably going to replace Austria here shortly. And then some of these other small fa uh, Chinese states, like Gongxi, fascist Italy comes in there. Sweden, as socialist, huh, just like the real world, their population's very low, so they've done quite well for themselves. And then Württemberg actually managed to make it to secondary power. The Ottomans have dropped all the way down to 14. The old man of Europe hasn't done great. 
and then the Democratic Republic of Benin, which would be somewhere in, I guess over here in Africa, actually managed to make it all the way, actually where would Benin be? Huh, oh yep, it's all this huge stretch of Western South Africa. So, you know, interesting to have a fairly powerful African state, even if it's a vassal, or puppet even, of France. And another little bit of prestige. We are going to get this last bit of naval training, but this will probably be the last... I can't imagine we will get another technology after this. Let me just put it that way. Nationalist officers? No, I am not going to kill off that many of our officers, so just pretend it rains. It happens. No one likes the rain. Sometimes people get angry. So for our last one, let's just do bank inspection board. Hey, it will be completed on the very last day of the game. How about that? That should pause it for us right on December 31st. She works out extremely well. Oh, and that was some extra naval organization and prestige. Sorry, clicking through that too quickly. Extra farming efficiency f from tractors. Everybody loves tractors. And it's very sad to see our once great army reduced to what it is currently. But at least our industry has pushed us through, keeping us safely in number one. Although the USA is growing quite quickly. Taking back California really helped them. Now it's November. Two months to go. What a ride it's been, guys. And somewhere else explodes. Very fitting. December. We get a little bit extra permanent prestige. Just plus one. Raises our score ever so slightly. Organic work. Doesn't matter. Just let it do its course. And... Here we go. December, or January 1st, 1936. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like I can move this little window, but I'm going to try and give you guys a quick overview of the world as it is. Of course, in Europe, oh, this is kind of hard, but in Europe, Russians have taken bits of France as part of that war. France still owns a good part of Prussia, but Austria was weakened. The Ottomans never gave up much land, but just never became very meaningful. Africa is very colorful, with uh, America and France. Actually, Benin is free, it looks like. Huh. But yeah, uh, Portugal has some. The Netherlands have some. Britain has South Africa. Surprisingly enough, Orange, Zulu, and Transvaal survived the Hundred Years. Egypt stayed pretty big as an Ethiopia survived. Italy was really the big winner in Africa. Uh, of course, Russia and Asia. Asia has British India, which has covered in rebels, but most of India stayed relatively independent. China formed, but did not actually annex all of these bits of land. Well, specifically Tibet. I guess King Hai and Gongxi stayed independent. And of course, we have Southeast Asia, uh, Australia, not really noteworthy, the US, USCA survived, Mexico survived in its historical borders, although a bit further south. Uh, south America, Brazil got big, and Colombia got fairly big. Uh, Chile gave up some land to the UK, and Argentina gave up some land to Brazil. And then, of course, there's British Canada, which we walked across and Japanese USA, which is Alaska. So, uh, thank you guys for watching. It's been a real fun ride, and I can't wait for her. I'm looking forward to starting the next Let's Play. I It should be starting here pretty soon, so thank you guys again. It's been a good run.